This morning on CBS 2 News, the president addressing concerns about the economy. What he says as more Americans find themselves paying up. Plus, the Boise Rescue Mission does more than give people a place to stay. A look at the program helping kids with college. Plus, serious weather doing damage in Alaska. A look at the devastation as of this morning. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise. It is Monday, September 19th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter, and we will get to all your top stories in just a moment. But first, let's send it over to Marcos Guadarrama for a first look at your weather forecast. And good morning. That's right. A nice mild start to your Monday here is a look at some of our current temperatures about uh, 54 degrees here in Boise, uh, 52 out in Nampa, 60 out in Ontario, and then 47 down there in Mountain Home. 52 out in McCall. Going to see mild conditions for your afternoon. Looking at our morning temperatures, uh, starting out the morning there in the mid 50s, uh, warming our way up into the upper 60s. And we're going to be sitting at about 71 degrees by noon this afternoon. We are projected to get into the uh, Low, low 80s for today. There's 83 here, Boise, 83 down in Mountain Home, and then 79 degrees out in Idaho City, 80 out in Caldwell and Nampa, and then 82 out in Emmett as well. Looking at that uh, running forecast for your morning, uh, no alerts as of right now. Uh, Going to be good weather with the exception of some hazy conditions out there, folks, but uh, that should be clearing up as well. So Mix of sun and clouds, hazy conditions, and then a shower chance Wednesday, but cooler temperatures to start your week. Love that, Marcos. Thank you. It is 501 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything looking good. Uh, no reports of anything slowing you down this morning. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And you're looking live in London this morning where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin will be taken in procession from the Palace of Westminster, Westminster to Westminster Abbey. That's where the state funeral is held. Now, CBS News is carrying the funeral as a special report. Well, here at home, President Biden speaking out in what's become a rarity for him, a sit down interview. Now, Christine Frazau shares what he has to say about our struggling economy. Averting a rail strike last week seen as a win for the White House, but the agreement between rail carriers and union leaders representing workers has not yet been finalized, with some fears it may still fall apart. If, in fact, they had gone on strike, the supply chains in this country would have come to a screeching halt, and we would have seen a real economic crisis. Meanwhile, Americans used to prices at the pump ticking down are getting new warnings that it could all change due to a lack of investment in future oil production, including predictions the price of oil may climb back up to $150 a barrel. As the consumer price index numbers just released showed it up 8.3% from the previous year. You're not arguing that 8.3 is good news. No, I'm not saying it's good news, but it was 8.2 or 8.2 before. I mean, it's not, you, I, mean, I can make it sound like all of a sudden, my God, it went to 8.2%. It's, it's the highest inflation rate, Mr. President, in 40 years. I got that, but guess what we are? We're in a position where for the last several months it hasn't spiked. It is just barely, it's been basically even. While President Biden's overall approval rating has been steadily increasing, a brand new NBC News poll shows 58% of voters disapprove of the way he's handling the economy, giving Republicans a 19-point advantage over Democrats, an all-time high. Republicans hoping those numbers equal votes in the midterm elections. The Democratic Party's extreme on border, they're extreme on crime, they're extreme on inflation. Prior to this sit down, Joe Biden has been interviewed just 23 times between becoming president and May of 2022. Compare that to 95 times for Donald Trump and 187 times for Barack Obama at the same point in their presidencies. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzau. Well, your gas and electric prices, they'll be going up. Now, natural gas prices, they've soared from a global supply shortage and expected to stay high for months as we get closer to winter. Now, the Energy Information Administration, they estimate electricity. They'll average about 14.8% per 
per kilowatt per hour this year. That's up 7.5% from last year. Well, here in Idaho, gas prices continuing their snailing downward trend. You can expect to pay an, pay an average of around 4.41 a gallon this morning. That's down several cents from a week ago, but still 73 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up, it's going to be Costco on South Cole Road in Boise. You can get it for 4.16 a gallon there. And Idaho's unemployment rate, it ticked up for the month of August, but only by a tenth of a percent. It's now at 2.7 percent. That's still one full percentage point lower than the national average. The Boise Rescue Mission is known for providing shelter and food to the homeless. But what you may not know is that the Rescue Mission also helps with education. The mission is helping young people in its care go to college. As part of the program, staffers take students on college tours around the West. And it's so the kids get an uh, understanding that this is what college is and you can go to college because so many of them have no one in their family that have ever been to college before. Reverend Bill Roscoe, who heads up the rescue mission, says there are a lot of inspiring stories that have come out of this program. We have a gal at BSU who came to City Light with her mother when she was nine years old, and today she's a junior at Boise State, and we've helped her over the years academically, and we've helped her funding her education. For more information about the educational programs at the Boise Rescue Mission and how you can help, visit IdahoNews.com. And serious storms are hitting the U.S. Much of Alaska is digging out from one of the most powerful, powerful storms to hit that state in recent history. Alaska's governor is issuing a disaster declaration. We're trying to assess exactly uh, what has occurred. Again, this is a, almost a thousand miles worth of uh, storm front. Entire towns are submerged with roads destroyed and homes ripped off their foundation. The governor is urging residents to shelter and find high ground with more flooding expected to come. In the meantime, rain continues to fall in Puerto Rico after a hurricane hits the island over the weekend. They're seeing catastrophic flooding according to the National Hurricane Center. The center says parts of Puerto Rico could see up to 30 inches of rain by the time the storm is over. They're going to struggle a lot, like things are not going to be the same in a while for them. Power has been out on the entire island. FEMA says they have four warehouses around the island with food, water and generators. And a federal emergency declaration issued before the storm mobilized 300 plus agency employees. Well, here in Idaho, fire season still underway. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, there are about 38 large fires burning in Idaho this morning. In our state's largest blaze, that's the Moose Fire. It's burning over 130,000 acres. Officials holding a community meeting today. That's in North Salmon to talk about the fire. So far, it is 51% contained. And the Ross Fork Fire, nearly 38,000 acres this morning. There is some good news. Crews say the cooler weather helping limit some of that fire activity. That blaze now up to 44% contained. So some good news after the weekend and picture perfect conditions, Marcos. I don't think you could have um, called it better. And I'm hoping that it continues for at least part of our work week. Yeah, definitely going to be seeing uh, cooler temperatures this week. Once again, Sarah, about midweek, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, uh, surface smoke forecast. We've definitely improved a lot thanks to that weather, uh, those weather conditions we've been seeing, the more the moisture, the winds, of course. So currently uh, no smoke forecast alert for the time being. Here's a look at that air quality index in good standing right now. We were in that sensitive group category about a week ago, but definitely seeing that improvement uh, as of this weekend. So looking at that off to school forecast, though, this morning, 55 degrees as you're headed out the door, uh, taking the kids out the door. And then when the kids get back from school this afternoon, 79, sunny, we're going to be seeing about a mix of sun and clouds throughout the week and the possibility of some rain about midweek. But here's a look at our current temperatures right now. Uh, mid 50s out in Meridian, 51 down in Caldwell, and then a little cooler there in Cuna. Definitely uh, feeling a little chilly uh, in these uh, mornings now, but there's a uh, 50 out in Glens Ferry and then 60 in Ontario as well. Uh, looking at our temperature history, uh, trending back uh, into the more normal category. Once again, uh, we were a little bit above normal there on Saturday with a high of 83, but then Sunday's high of 78, definitely bringing us down into that normal category and that normal range. So for today, 83 degrees, 
80 uh, out in Nampa, 83 their mountain home. And this is going to be uh, about the warmest will be all week. We're going to see a little bump for tomorrow and then cool down there on Wednesday as we see a system move through the area. Looking at that dog walking forecast, mid 50s this morning, clear, some haze, and that sunrise, 728 a.m. Perfect. Thank you, Marcos. It is 510 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking live out there this morning. Yeah, everything looking good. A few more headlights out there to kick off your Monday, but not much slowing anybody down out there. Some good news. Of course, we do have some construction around Caldwell and Napa area. May set you back a few minutes, but of course, plan ahead for that. But when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, do you feel safe where you live? Today's number of the day polls Americans. 76% of voters say they'd feel safe going for a walk in their own neighborhoods at night. Now that in total includes large majorities of both men and women. And the Scott Rasmussen National Survey also shows 65% say they're confident if they needed help, police officers or neighbors or others would arrive quickly. Well, straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, Ukraine gaining the upper hand on Russia. A look at regained ground and the aftermath of that fight. Plus, President Biden setting the tone on Taiwan. The exclusive from 60 Minutes straight ahead. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. Now, of the adults who refuse to do this, nearly half say it's because they're too scared to try. The answer, some do-it-yourself projects. Definitely, I shy away from those sometimes, so you are not alone. Let's talk about today's question. Now, six out of 10 people think it's socially acceptable to do this this time of year. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Looking at your local forecast today, out in council, hazy conditions with a high of 81. Tonight, that haze sticking around with a low of 55. And tomorrow, more smoky conditions with a high of 82. Thank you, Marcos. You're looking live in London this morning where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin it has been carried to Westminster where the state funeral is being held. Now, CBS News is carrying the funeral as a special report. You can also check in on IdahoNews.com for live updates. Well, this is thousands camped out on the streets of London overnight, hoping to secure a place to watch Queen Elizabeth's funeral procession. Now, President Biden and at least 500 heads of state and other dignitaries traveled to London to attend the monarch's funeral. It was under the tightest security the city has ever seen. To developing news this morning, the fighting in Ukraine this weekend put new pressure on Russian forces and their retreat in some areas, revealing atrocities. Now, CBS's Deborah Pata is there. More than 400 crosses mark shallow graves in this pine forest near Izium. Volodymyr Kolesnik is looking for three of his relatives. He's been told their bodies are here. Number 174 is his aunt, Natalia Yakovenko. He carries on his search. Investigators will be exhuming the bodies for at least a week. Each death investigated as a possible war crime. I've never seen anything like this, Kharkiv's chief war crimes prosecutor Oleksandr Ilyenkov told us. The scale of killing is unbelievable. Multiple torture chambers across the region dispense the terror that kept civilian populations under control. Anatoly Kharakhatny was in one of them, where he survived electric shocks and beatings. They wanted me to praise Vladimir Putin on YouTube. I refused, and they told me, get ready, we're going to shoot you. These grim discoveries come after a lightning counteroffensive reclaimed most of the territory seized by Russia in the northeast in just six days. It began here in Bayrak, where Russian soldiers fled their bases like these in panic, clearing the way for Ukrainian troops to reshape the battlefields of Kharkiv.
Vladimir Putin's war is not going according to plan, and he's been reduced to this. The leader of the Russian mercenary group Wagner, seen recruiting prisoners to fight on the front line. Wagner has been accused of human rights atrocities in Syria and Africa, raising the haunting fear of more nameless wooden crosses in a country that's already endured unimaginable suffering. Deborah Pada, CBS News, Bayrak. Well, President Biden says U.S. troops would defend the island of Taiwan if it were attacked. Now, Biden made the remark during 60 Minutes, an interview that aired last night on CBS. Now, Biden said U.S. troops would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion of the island. Now, after the interview aired, the White House said the U.S. policy regarding Taiwan hasn't changed. China claims that Taiwan is part of its territory. Good morning. I'm Ashley Carter up in the newsroom. Immigrants are being bused to so-called sanctuary cities far from the southern border. They're being dropped off from Washington, D.C. to Martha's Vineyard to New York, and more are expected to be on their way. Many of the immigrants are unsure where they're being taken, and the cities and states receiving them aren't being given any advance notice, creating what some officials are calling a humanitarian crisis. We need uh, resources for housing, resources to make sure that we can properly give people the medical care, all of the basic necessities that you would give new arrivals that enter a city. Other officials argue this is a national problem and the burden of the immigration shouldn't be left to the southern states. It's not just 50 of these individuals coming across, it's thousands. The challenges have prompted more questions, including from lawmakers on Capitol Hill, directed at the White House about what policy changes, if any, are being considered. And now, Marcos, we are coming out of a beautiful weekend. I don't know about you guys, but I had the windows open, the doors <laughs> open. <laughs> yeah, no, we just wanted to get outside this weekend. And I know, Marcos, you were at the Boise State game, checked out Hyde Park yeah. Street Fair myself, and Ashley getting the keys to her new place. Very yes, exciting. Beautiful weather for moving in. Hey, yeah, no, much better than yeah coming in during the winter season. We're happy <laughs> you're joining us during this time. And speaking of this time, too, it's looking great stepping out the door this morning. Marcos, hopefully more of the weekend weather is in store for us. Yeah, going to be uh, staying in those uh, lower 80s for today, Sarah. We're going to be seeing it cool down about midweek, uh, but uh, overall we're going to be staying in those normal range categories uh, for our highs. But uh, this is our live shot right now. This is our current temperature downtown Boise. Calm out there. A nice uh, mild start to your morning as you start your week uh, this morning. So uh, current temperatures there 55 in Meridian, 51 Caldwell and then 48 out in CUNA. Nice uh, mild cooler temperatures 48 down in Mountain Home and then there's 50 out in Glens Ferry. Uh, we are going to be seeing a little cool down uh, beginning Wednesday of this week as the system moves up into our region, uh, potentially bringing showers into the mountain region uh, and then possibly into the valley about midweek this week, cooling us down as well. But I'll show you more about that here in a second. Looking at our highs for today, 83 Boise, 82 in Emmett. So nice, uh, about a degree or two above normal. 83 there, Mountain Home, 80 out in Caldwell and then 80 out in Nampa as well. So. A uh, quick rundown of what to expect. Sun and clouds, hazy conditions, that shower chance on Wednesday, and then those cooler temperatures happening midweek. Looking at our extended seven day forecast, sunny conditions for tomorrow. That'll be our warmest for this week. And then there's that dip on Wednesday with a chance of showers with a high of 77. Partly cloudy there Thursday, 67 degrees, and then 72. And staying in the 70s and sunny for the rest of the week, Sarah. Yeah, couldn't ask for a better forecast. Thank you, Marcos. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. It is 521 on your Monday live look out there this morning. Yeah, everything running nice and smooth. Uh, not much to report, but of course, when you do eventually get in the car, you just want to turn your dial to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a new treatment netting good news for those suffering from long COVID. And later, helping a critical need right here in our community. Join us for the CBS 2 Blood Drive this Wednesday. We have details when we come back. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 
It's 523. Welcome back. CBS 2, we're hosting a blood drive. It's this Wednesday. Now, blood, it's very important for those in need of life-saving care. We know this. And that's why the American Red Cross is asking for your help. Now, back in January, hospitals across the valley were critically low in their blood supply. And while blood supply across Idaho has gone up, there's still a great need for blood platelets and O negative blood types. Again, that blood drive is this Wednesday. It'll be at the Boise Town Square Mall from 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. We'll all be there, so come say hi. You can make an appointment by heading to IdahoNews.com. It all just takes less than an hour to save a life. That easy. Well, it's estimated that one in five adults who have coronavirus suffer from long COVID even months after being infected. Well, now researchers in New Jersey, they're testing a treatment that could help those suffering with the most debilitating symptoms. Elise Preston has more. Yes. We'll have to do that. Nurse Debbie Turner has spent three decades caring for patients, but when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, the frontline worker was the patient. There are a couple days that I just, I don't remember at all. Now, more than two years after her infection, she's still battling symptoms of long COVID. I still have problems with um, my memory, like brain fog. Um, I still get short of breath. There's still so much unknown about this virus. As scientists work to better understand long COVID, treatment usually focuses on relieving symptoms. Now, a new study at Hackensack University Medical Center is testing whether omega-3 supplements can help. Because we know COVID is an inflammatory process, could fish oil supplements minimize the inflammation, which in turn is possibly causing these long-term symptoms. Dr. Manisha Parulikar is leading the study. The omega-3 supplement is a specific formulation that's different from products purchased over the counter. Nurse Turner is one of 30 participants in the study's first round. I don't know if, if I really felt a difference, but I felt hopeful that no matter what happens, if I'm on the placebo or I'm taking this, that all of this is aimed at being able to find something that may work. Proud to be a part of research that could help long COVID patients get their lives back. Elise Preston, CBS News, Hackensack, New Jersey. Well, previous studies in Europe and Israel reported some positive results on omega-3s. Well, right now, the participants in that New Jersey program are all healthcare workers at Hackensack University Medical Center. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, a funeral fit for a queen. We take you live to Westminster right after the break. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. Of course, after all your favorites, join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. Six out of 10 people think it's socially acceptable to do this this time of year. All right, folks, what do you think it is? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the president addressing concerns about the economy, what he has to say as more Americans find themselves paying up. Plus, the Boise Rescue Mission does more than give people a place to stay. A look at the program helping kids with college. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Here's a look at our current temperature right now. 54 degrees, a nice calm start to your Monday morning. Feels like 54 degrees out there. Looking at our current temperatures across the area, 51 out in Caldwell, 60 out there in Ontario, and then 47 down in Mountain Home. There's Idaho City there at 40, and then McCall there at 52 degrees. Looking at our temperature trends for this morning, gonna be warming up into the 60s there by 10, 10 a.m., 67 there by 11 a.m., and then the 
uh, 71 there by noon. We are going to be getting into the upper 70s, uh, low 80s for today. So normal temperature for this time of year, folks, 79 degrees. Yesterday's high 78 will be a, a couple degrees over our normal for this time of year. 83 there, Boise, 83 down in Mountain Home and then 79 out in Idaho City. And then there's Caldwell Nampa at 80 and Ontario there at 83 degrees. Looking at your running forecast, things looking good if you plan on being out for a run this morning. Uh, no alerts currently with the exception of some hazy conditions this morning. Looking at that, uh, what to expect over the next few days, a mix of sun and clouds, hazy conditions, shower chance on Wednesday and cooler temperatures coming up near the end of the week. Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. Looking forward to that. It is 531 on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there looking pretty good. Uh, not much to talk about. No reports of anything slowing you down. What we like to see on your Monday. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom and you're looking live in London this morning where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin is in Westminster Abbey where the state funeral is being held. You can check in on IdahoNews.com for live updates. And the eyes of the world are on Britain as the nation says a last goodbye today to Queen Elizabeth II. As many as two million people could fill the streets of London to watch the funeral procession. CBS's Ian Lee is there with more. People rush to join the line to say a final farewell to Queen Elizabeth. The last mourners filed past her coffin early this morning. I felt just had to come and pay my final respects to our majestic queen. She's done so much for us. Over the last four days, hundreds of thousands of people waited to honor the queen, including kings and presidents. I think it's such a beautiful way for her to have been sent off with people around. The doors to this stage of mourning have closed. Now guests for the monarch's funeral will fill Westminster Abbey. The royal family invited more than 2,000 people, including 500 world leaders. After the funeral, a procession will carry the Queen's coffin through the historic heart of London as Big Ben rings out one last time for Her Majesty. It's a moment of history. It's a moment that we would never get to experience probably in our lifetime. This woman and her young son camped out overnight in Windsor to get a glimpse of Queen Elizabeth's coffin as it makes its way there this afternoon for her burial. We have sleeping bags, uh, some food, um, yeah, lots of layers. Ten days of national mourning will come to an end when the monarch is laid to rest in a private ceremony at St. George's Chapel alongside her late husband, Prince Philip. I don't think we're ever going to have a monarch that's going to reign for 70 years again. Queen Elizabeth's passing at age 96 came the same year she celebrated seven decades on the throne as Britain's longest reigning monarch. Today marks the end of the Elizabethan era. On Sunday, President Biden signed the official condolence book and attended a reception at Buckingham Palace hosted by King Charles III. President Biden called Queen Elizabeth decent and honorable and all about service, saying his heart went out to the royal family. Well, here at home this morning, President Biden speaking out in what's become a rarity for him, a sit down interview. Now, he addressed some concerns about the economy on 60 Minutes last night. Now, some predict oil may climb back to $150 a barrel as the consumer price index numbers just released show it's up 8.3 percent in August from the previous year. It's, it's been the highest inflation rate, Mr. President, in 40 years. I got that. But guess what we are? We're in a position where for the last several months it hasn't spiked. It has just barely, it's been basically even. While President Biden's overall approval rating has been steadily increasing, a brand new NBC News poll shows about 58% of voters disapprove of how he's dealing with the economy and gives Republicans a 19-point advantage over Democrats on the issue an all-time high. Well, in the meantime, your gas and electric prices, they'll be going up. Natural gas prices, they've soared from a global supply shortage. They're expected to stay high for months as we get closer and closer to winter. Now, the Energy Information Administration estimates that electricity will average 14.8 per kilowatt hour this year. That's up 7.5% from last year.
Well, here in Idaho, gas prices continuing to snail downward. Expect to pay up an average of about 4.41 a gallon this morning. That's down several cents from a week ago, but still 73 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up still will be Costco on South Cole Road. You can find it for 4.16 a gallon there. And Idaho's unemployment rate ticked up in August, but only by a tenth of a percent. It's now at 2.7 percent. That's still about one full percentage point lower than the national average. The Boise Rescue Mission is known for providing shelter and food to the homeless. But what you may not know is that the rescue mission also helps with education. The mission is helping young people in its care go to college. As part of the program, staffers take students on college tours around the West. And it's so the kids get an uh, understanding that this is what college is and you can go to college because so many of them have no one in their family that have ever been to college before. Reverend Bill Roscoe, who heads up the rescue mission, says there are a lot of inspiring stories that have come out of the program. We have a gal at BSU who came to City Light with her mother when she was nine years old, and today she's a junior at Boise State, and we've helped her over the years academically, and we've helped her funding her education. For more information about the educational programs at the Boise Rescue Mission and how you can help, visit IdahoNews.com. Well, here in Idaho, fire season still underway. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, there are 38 large fires burning in the Gem State this morning. Now, our state's largest blaze is the Moose Fire. That's burning over 130,000 acres. Officials holding a community meeting today. That's in North Salmon to talk about the fire. So far, it's 51% contained. And the Ross Fork Fire, nearly 38,000 acres this morning. Some good news. Crews say cooler weather is helping limit that fire activity. That blaze is up to 44% contained. Yeah, this cooler weather not only helping the fires, but I think helping a lot of people get outside. And I know we're definitely noticing less haze as you're stepping outside each and every day. Yeah, that's right. Uh, looking at that smoke forecast, we are definitely seeing improvements uh, compared to last week. We were seeing those uh, unhealthy categories uh, about a week ago, but things are clearing up now thanks to that uh, moisture coming through the windy conditions last week. So currently that air quality index improving uh, to that good condition. We were in that sub sensitive group uh, about a week ago, but and then an, an unhealthy for a little bit there last week as well, but definitely see those improvements. Looking at that uh, morning off to school forecast this morning, clear conditions, 55 degrees this morning. May you want to wear a light jacket as you take the kids out to the bus stop and then heading home this afternoon, upper 70s, sunny conditions, chance of a uh, cloud or two throughout the area. But our current temperatures, 48 CUNA, 54 Meridian, 54 out in Nampa and then 51 out in Caldwell as well. There's Mountain Home at 50 and then 32 out for our friends out in Sanley. Going to show you these uh, temperature history real quick. We are kind of trending uh, in that near normal, below normal, and then above normal trend uh, for the past several weeks. But uh, uh, our high yesterday, 78. Today will be about near normal, a little bit above normal, and then we're going to be seeing a cool down bringing us to that more normal category uh, as we see that cool down. Looking at our highs for today, 83 Mountain Home, 83 in Boise, and then 80s there in Caldwell and Nampa, and then 82 out in Emmett as well. If you plan on taking your dog out for a walk this morning or your pet, 55 degrees, going to get into the 60s later on this morning. Clear conditions, some haze, but clearing up, and then that sunrise happening at 728. Sarah? Ah, Marcos, it's going to be a picture perfect week. Love it. It is 539 on your Monday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. Bring team traffic all morning long. Seeing a few more headlights along I-84 today, but no reports of anything again in your way. Just keep in mind there are some areas maybe a little slower because of construction out there in the lower Treasure Valley, so Caldwell Nampa area. But other than that, it is looking good, folks. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, do you feel safe where you live? Today's number of the day polls Americans. 76% of voters say they'd feel safe going for a walk in their own neighborhood at night. 
Now that total includes large majorities of both men and women. Now the Scott Rasmussen National Survey also shows 65% say they're confident that if they needed help, police officers, neighbors or others would arrive quickly. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. Hope your thinking caps are on, folks. It is six out of 10 people. They think it's socially acceptable to do this this time of year. Marcos, Ashley. You know, I, I think people think it's acceptable to put up Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, oh, go ahead, Ash. I was going to say, listen to Christmas music. <laughs> yeah, um, we have a culprit right here in our CBS2 <laughs> studios who is already doing that. Uh, so six out of 10 does check out feeling very comfortable. Uh, less than 100 days, by the way, until Christmas, guys. Crazy to think about. Um, I'm with you. I think it's the Christmas music. Uh, it's, I feel like it's the right time to kind of put out some of your pumpkins, get Halloween going. I was definitely itching to do that this week, this weekend. So let's see what folks at home have to say. Linda, yep, putting up your Christmas decorations. All right, let's see what else. Wearing white after Labor Day. That's yeah, a good one. Definitely guilty. I wear white all the yep. time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see what else. Joe, smashing Halloween decorations. Six out of ten. That's a lot. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah, maybe maybe don't do that a little later in the season. Uh, but again, people work hard on them. All right, let's see what else. All right, that's what we're looking at for now, guys. Again, if you don't like any of these answers, you think you know, you have an hour and 15 minutes to guess. Of course, you can do that on our Facebook page or our Twitter, very easy. And we'll read some more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS this morning. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, Hurricane Fiona slamming Puerto Rico. The impact so far and what's forecasted next for the island. Here's a look at your local forecast in Payette today. Hazy conditions, a high of 81. Tonight, that haze sticking around with a low of 54. And tomorrow, hazy conditions continue with a high of 83. Thank you, Marcos. You're looking live in London this morning where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin is moving to Westminster Abbey. That's where the state funeral is being held. Now you can check in on IdahoNews.com for live updates. In the meantime, thousands camped out in the streets of London overnight, hoping to secure a place to watch Queen Elizabeth's funeral procession. Now, President Biden and at least 500 heads of state and other dignitaries traveled to London to attend the monarch's funeral. That under the highest and tightest security that city has ever seen. Well, Hurricane Fiona made landfall in Puerto Rico over the weekend, leaving crippling damage and more than a million people in the dark. Naomi Ruckham shows us the impact so far and what's forecast next for the island. Category 1 Hurricane Fiona slammed into Puerto Rico Sunday, triggering landslides and floods that ripped apart roads and homes. The storm washed away this bridge in a central mountain town, which was installed by the National Guard after Hurricane Maria hit in 2017. Hundreds have been evacuated or rescued, with muddy water sweeping away cars, pouring into buildings, and destroying an airport runway. Authorities have opened more more than 100 shelters across the island. In the south, evacuees say they are worried about the houses they left behind. Forecasters now warn historic levels of rain could be on the way, up to 30 inches in eastern and southern Puerto Rico. At least a million customers were left without power into Monday, shutting down schools and government agencies across the island. At a Puerto Rican grocery store in Houston, employees worry about their family members back home. They're going to struggle a lot, like things are not going to be the same in a while for them. The damage is evoking painful memories for the island territory. Hurricane Fiona hit just two days before the fifth anniversary of Hurricane Maria, a Category 4 storm which was blamed for nearly 3,000 deaths. Puerto Rico's governor is calling the damage from Fiona catastrophic. President Biden has declared a state of emergency. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. Well, Hurricane Fiona also struck on the anniversary of Hurricane Hugo. That hit Puerto Rico 33 years ago as a Category 3 storm. Officials say it could take several days to restore power on the island. 
and a powerful typhoon has hit the shore of southwestern Japan. The typhoon made landfall in Japan's Kyushu region Sunday, then weakened to a tropical storm. Japan's meteorological agency says the storm has gusts of wind that hit up to 100 miles per hour. Around 10 million people were ordered to evacuate due to the typhoon. As of this morning, at least one person has been found dead due to the storm. And in Alaska, flood water Floodwaters are starting to recede after the remnants of Typhoon Murbach battered the western side of the state. It's the worst storm there in a half century, leaving destruction along 1,000 miles of coastline. While damage is widespread, there have been no reports of injuries or deaths. Well, in California, many returning home as progress is made against the Mosquito Fire. That's more than 12,000 evacuees that can now go home. Slow and steady rainfall helped suppress the fire. Crews, they were able to push the flames away from homes. I can't wait to get back in the house with my animals, and we're looking forward to sleeping in our own beds tonight. Just under 500 people are still under an evacuation order, while less than 1,000 people are under an evacuation warning. Now, before those evacuation lines can be downgraded or the zones, utility companies and fire agencies will need to discuss fire behavior. Yeah, and it was a relatively good weekend for at least our fires here in Idaho. Cooler conditions, and it's looking like those are going to be sticking around. Yeah, cooler conditions. Uh, we did see improvement in that uh, haze as well, that smoky conditions in the area, Sarah. And we're going to continue to see those improvements throughout the week. Uh, I'll get to that here in a second. But our current temperature right now, this is our live shot, 54 degrees. Calm winds out there as you start your week. Looking at our current temperatures, uh, about mid 50s there, low 50s, 51 out in Caldwell, 48 CUNA, and then uh, 60 out in Ontario. So nice mild uh, conditions there as you start your week. Going to be staying fairly dry for right now. We are going to see a system move through our region uh, around Wednesday. That's going to cool us down some, potentially bringing some rain and thunderstorms to the mountain regions and then possibly here to the valley. And then looking at our highs for this afternoon, 83 there in Boise, 80 out in Nampa, and then 83 down in Mountain Home. We are going to be a couple degrees warmer than our normal temperatures for this time of year. I believe it's in the upper 70s, so, uh, but we are going to see that cool down later on as well. So what to expect? A mix of sun and clouds, hazy conditions, shower chance on Wednesday, and then those cooler temperatures coming to near the end of the week. Hazy today, 85 there for tomorrow. Tuesday will be our warmest day of the year before we cool down there by Wednesday. Shower chance, 77. Getting into the 60s there, partly cloudy on Thursday, and then sunny for the rest of the week, low to mid 70s, and then 80 there by Sunday. Looking at that mountain forecast, hazy conditions, showers on Wednesday and Thursday. Going to see a cool down there as well, 55 there Thursday, and then 60s back on Friday. Sunny conditions, and then we're going to uh, level out there in the mid uh, to upper 60s, and then 70s there on Sunday, lows in the 30s. Crazy to see those 30 degrees for the mountains. It's about that time, 551 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Still looking good out there to kick off your work week. Hope you all are having a good start to your morning. Of course, when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, our pet of the week still looking for his forever home. We introduce you to Talbot straight ahead. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 554 on your Monday. Welcome back. Idaho Fish and Game receiving multiple reports of a mountain lion in Garden City and West Boise neighborhoods. Now, door, doorbell cameras caught this guy wandering through town. Wildlife managers say the mountain lion was avoiding people and conflicts, and there's no risk to public safety. They do want to remind you, though, that if you do see one of these guys walking around, never run away or turn your back. Instead, slowly back away while maintaining eye contact. Also, keep those pets safe. And speaking of pets, it's our CBS2 Pet of the Week, still in need of a loving forever home. Take a look at Talbot and check out those eyebrows. Nope, they are not drawn on. He's a seven-year-old Alaskan Malamute blend. He's a fluffy guy and gets tangles, so he will need lots of brushing. 
to meet Talbot or any of the West Valley Humane Society's other pets available for adoption. You can schedule an appointment through IdahoNews.com. Well, lots of fun in Idaho over the weekend. The Boise's Boise's first United Methodist Church celebrating 150 years in the Treasure Valley. Now it all started downtown at Cathedral of the Rockies. Now through its century and a half, Pastor Benjamin Kramer says the focus has remained on improving the community. And so we're going to look back at our history at how we have done that and how maybe we haven't done that so well and hoping to continue into the future with uh, making an, a positive impact in, in our Boise community. Of course, it's also about having some fun. There was a bounce house for kids, food and music and those who made a donation to the church's food pantry. They got to take a shot at dunking the pastor. Beautiful. Now at the Idaho Botanical Garden, a musical celebration mark Mexico's Independence Day. The performance was headlined by opera singers, as there was also a performance by the mariachi band Sol de Acapulco. And take a look at this. Many traveled to Camel's Back Park for the Hyde Park Street Fair. If you want to see more of the fun, of course, we have a full photo gallery. Just head to IdahoNews.com. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, talking track record with the president as November midterms are looming. And later, a global shortage on natural gas, how it may affect the upcoming winter. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning, your local news and weather. They continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the president addressing concerns about the economy. What he has to say as more Americans find themselves paying up. Plus, the Boise Rescue Mission does more than give people a place to stay. A look at the program helping kids in college. And later, serious weather doing damage in Alaska. A look at the devastation as of this morning. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise. It is Monday, September 19th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter, and we'll get to all your top stories in just a moment. But first, let's send it over to Marcos for a first look at our weather forecast. Here's a look at our live shot right now. Our current temperature 53 degrees out there. Uh, south winds there at five miles an hour. It's going to be a nice mild start to your Monday. Looking at our temperatures right now across the region, 49 out in Caldwell, 53 here Boise, Ontario there 57 and then McCall 47 and then Mountain Home there 47 degrees as well. Looking at our morning temperature trends getting into the uh, 60s there by 10 a.m. this morning, 67 by 11 a.m. and then by noon we should be seeing uh, 70 degrees there and then getting into the upper 70s, low 80s for this afternoon. Normal for this time, folks, 79. Yesterday's high, 78 degrees. And then on record there, uh, 1917, 94 degrees. But here's a look at those highs for today. 83 Boise, 83 Mountain Home, 81 out in Nampa, and then 81 there Caldwell, and then 82 out there in Emmett. Taking a look at that running forecast this morning, uh, Things are looking good. No advisories uh, aside from the occasional uh, haze out there and a nice mild start to your morning for your morning walk or your morning run. Sarah. Yeah, I can't ask for better conditions. Thank you, Marcos. It is 601 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. 
Of course, everything looking good out there. Uh, nothing to slow you down. You can see a few lights out there this morning at I-84 and Orchard. Yeah, just be aware if you're heading that way. But of course, uh, not much to talk about. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And you're looking live in London this morning where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin is heading to Westminster Abbey. That's where the state funeral will be held. Now you can check in on IdahoNews.com for live updates. Well, here at home, President Biden speaking out in what's become quite a rarity for him, a sit down interview. Now, Christine Frazau shares what he has to say about our struggling economy. Averting a rail strike last week seen as a win for the White House, but the agreement between rail carriers and union leaders representing workers has not yet been finalized, with some fears it may still fall apart. If in fact they had gone on strike, the supply chains in this country would have come to a screeching halt. We would have seen a real economic crisis. Meanwhile, Americans used to prices at the pump ticking down are getting new warnings that it could all change due to a lack of investment in future oil production, including predictions the price of oil may climb back up to $150 a barrel. As the consumer price index numbers just released showed it up 8.3 percent from the previous year. You're not arguing that 8.3 is good news. No, I'm not saying it's good news, but it was 8.2 or 8.2 before. I mean, it's not, you, maybe I can make it sound like all of a sudden, my God, it went to 8.2 percent. It's, it's the highest inflation rate, Mr. President, in 40 years. I got that, but guess what we are? We're in a position where for the last several months it hasn't spiked. It has just barely, it's been basically even. While President Biden's overall approval rating has been steadily increasing, a brand new NBC News poll shows 58% of voters disapprove of the way he's handling the economy, giving Republicans a 19-point advantage over Democrats, an all-time high. Republicans hoping those numbers equal votes in the midterm elections. The Democratic Party's extreme on border, they're extreme on crime, they're extreme on inflation. Prior to this sit down, Joe Biden has been interviewed just 23 times between becoming president and May of 2022. Compare that to 95 times for Donald Trump and 187 times for Barack Obama at the same point in their presidencies. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzau. Well, your gas and electric bill, they'll be going up. Natural gas prices have soared from the global supply shortage. They're expected to stay high for months as we get closer to the winter. Now, the Energy Information Administration, they're estimating electricity will average 14.8 cents per kilowatt hour. This year, that's up 7.5% from last year. Well, here in Idaho, gas prices continuing their snailing downward trend. Expect to pay an average of 4.41 a gallon this morning. That's down several cents from a week ago, but still 73 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will still be Costco in Boise. You can get it for $4.16 a gallon there. And Idaho's unemployment rate ticked up in August, but only by a tenth of a percent. That's now at 2.7 percent. That's still one full percentage point lower than the national average. The Boise Rescue Mission is known for providing shelter and food to the homeless. But what you may not know is that the rescue mission also helps with education. The mission is helping young people in its care to go to college. As part of the program, staffers take students on college tours around the West. And it's so the kids get an uh, understanding that this is what college is and you can go to college because so many of them have no one in their family that have ever been to college before. Reverend Bill Roscoe, who heads up the rescue mission, says there are a lot of inspiring stories that have come out of the program. We have a gal at BSU who came to City Light with her mother when she was nine years old, and today she's a junior at Boise State, and we've helped her over the years academically, and we've helped her funding her education. For more information about the educational programs at the Boise Rescue Mission and how you can help, go ahead and visit IdahoNews.com. And serious storms are hitting the U.S. Much of Alaska is digging out of one of the most powerful storms to hit the state in recent history. Alaska's governor is issuing a disaster declaration. We're trying to assess exactly uh, what has occurred. Again, this is a, almost a thousand miles worth of uh, storm front. Entire towns are submerged with roads destroyed and homes ripped off their foundation. The governor is urging residents to shelter and find high ground with more flooding expected to come. 
And in the meantime, rain continues to fall in Puerto Rico after a hurricane hits the island over the weekend. They're seeing catastrophic flooding, according to the National Hurricane Center. The center says parts of Puerto Rico could see up to 30 inches of rain by the time the storm is over. They're going to struggle a lot, like things are not going to be the same in a while for them. Powerhouse been out on the entire island. FEMA says they have four warehouses around the island with food, water, and generators. And a federal emergency declaration issued before the storm mobilized 300 plus agency employees. Well, here in Idaho, fire season is still underway. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, we have 38 large fires burning in Idaho this morning. Our state's largest blaze, it's the Moose Fire. It's burning over 130,000 acres. Officials holding a community meeting today in North Salmon to talk about the fire. So far, it is 51% contained. And the Ross Fork Fire, nearly 38,000 acres this morning. There is some good news. Crews say the cooler weather helping limit fire activity. That blaze is up to 44% contained. Yeah, seeing some good ups in containment, and it was a beautiful weekend, guys. Everybody have a good time enjoying the outdoors? Oh, yes, lots of moving going on, but, you know, all the windows, the doors were open, letting that nice, cool air in. Gosh, I'm loving it, and Marcos, please tell me that it's only going to continue. The low 80s, upper 70s, we could stay here, of course, for the next month, month and a half, and I think we would be sitting pretty. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, we're going to be staying in the low 80s, uh, upper 70s. We are going to be seeing a cool down later this week. I'll get to that in a bit. But uh, yeah, uh, today we're going to be staying in the low 80s. Uh, so going to be some nice uh, fall like conditions. I'm going to talk about the smoke forecast for a bit. We are seeing improvements, though, uh, with that weather that we've been seeing, the moisture, the windy, uh, the windy conditions. So definitely been clearing out uh, as uh, that with that uh, a smoke forecast and looking at our air quality index uh, we are in that improved category there we were in that sensitive group category just last week but we've definitely seen that uh, improvement this week so off to school this morning 55 and clear this afternoon as you're uh, getting the kids uh, picking the kids up 79 degrees there sunny we may see some clouds uh, gonna have a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the week so current temperatures there 55 meridian uh, 53 here in Boise, 49 there out in Caldwell, and then 50 out in Mountain Home, and then 57 out in Ontario. Going to talk a little bit about our temperature history there. Going to be staying in that near normal or below normal category. We are going to be getting into those upper 70s, lower 80s throughout this week, and then into the 60s by Thursday of this week as well. So our highs for today. 83 there Mountain Home, 79 Idaho City, 71 Stanley, and then 83 here in Boise. And then of course, 81 there in Nampa. Quick uh, dog walking forecast, 55 this morning, clear, some haze, and that sunrise at 728. Well, thank you, Marcos. It is 610 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get our first check this morning from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. How's it going out there? Well, good morning. Now, we had some overnight paving work uh, pretty much wrapped up on uh, Eagle Road for the most part. It was down to one lane each direction using the southbound uh, side of Eagle Road for quite a while. And we had southbound delays at one point all the way back to Pine. Looks like there's still some heavy traffic working its way out in that area of Pine partway to Franklin and uh, things gradually getting back to normal there. Northbound, moving fine north of the freeway. Traffic on I-84, not much going yet uh, this time of the morning. Usually pretty light, that's the case. Uh, 184 looks good, too. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, now to our question of the day. Do you feel safe where you live? Today's number of the day polled Americans, 76% say voters, 76% of voters say they feel safe going for a walk in their own neighborhood at night. And that total includes large majorities of both men and women. The Scott Rasmussen National Survey also shows 65% say they're confident that if they needed help, police officers, neighbors, or others would arrive quickly. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, Ukraine gaining the upper hand on Russia. A look at regained ground and the aftermath of the fight. Plus, President Biden setting the tone on Taiwan. The exclusive from 60 Minutes straight ahead. 
And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. Of the adults who refuse to do this, nearly half say it's because they're too scared to try. That answer was a DIY project. Yeah, do it yourself. Of course, guys, it's a fun time. Be brave. You can do it. Now, for today's question, six out of ten people think it's socially acceptable to do this this time of the year. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your local forecast in council today. Hazy conditions with a high of 81 tonight. Hazy conditions with a low of 55 and tomorrow smoky conditions with a high of 82. You're looking live in London this morning where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin is being carried to Westminster Abbey. That's where the state funeral is being held. Now you can watch and check in on IdahoNews.com for all the live updates. In the meantime, thousands camped out on the streets of London overnight, hoping to secure a place to watch Queen Elizabeth's funeral procession. President Biden and at least 500 heads of state and other dignitaries traveled to London to attend the monarch's funeral under the tightest security the city has ever seen. To developing news this morning, the fighting in Ukraine this weekend putting new pressure on Russian forces and their retreat in some areas revealing atrocities. CBS's Deborah Pata is there. More than 400 crosses mark shallow graves in this pine forest near Izium. Volodymyr Kolesnik is looking for three of his relatives. He's been told their bodies are here. Number 174 is his aunt, Natalia Yakovenko. He carries on his search. Investigators will be exhuming the bodies for at least a week. Each death investigated as a possible war crime. I've never seen anything like this, Kharkiv's chief war crimes prosecutor, Oleksandr Ilyenkov, told us. The scale of killing is unbelievable. Multiple torture chambers across the region dispense the terror that kept civilian populations under control. Anatoly Kharakhatny was in one of them, where he survived electric shocks and beatings. They wanted me to praise Vladimir Putin on YouTube. I refused, and they told me, get ready, we're going to shoot you. These grim discoveries come after a lightning counteroffensive reclaimed most of the territory seized by Russia in the northeast in just six days. It began here in Bayrak, where Russian soldiers fled their bases like these in panic, clearing the way for Ukrainian troops to reshape the battlefields of Kharkiv. Vladimir Putin's war is not going according to plan, and he's been reduced to this. The leader of the Russian mercenary group Wagner, seen recruiting prisoners to fight on the front line. Wagner has been accused of human rights atrocities in Syria and Africa, raising the haunting fear of more nameless wooden crosses in a country that's already endured unimaginable suffering. Deborah Pada, CBS News, Bayrak. President Biden says U.S. troops would defend the island of Taiwan if it were attacked. Now, Biden made the remark during 60 Minutes interview that aired last night on CBS. Biden said U.S. troops would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion of the island. After the interview aired, the White House said the U.S. policy regarding Taiwan hasn't changed. Now, China claims that Taiwan is part of its territory. Good morning. I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom. Immigrants are being bused to so-called sanctuary cities far from the southern border. They're being dropped off from Washington, D.C. to Martha's Vineyard to New York, and more are expected to be on their way. Many of the immigrants are unsure where they're being taken, and the cities and states receiving them aren't being given advance notice, creating what some officials are calling a humanitarian crisis. The challenges are prompting more questions, including from lawmakers on Capitol Hill, directed at the White House, about what policy changes, if any, are being considered. Well, guys, it is Monday kicking off the work week, right? And temperatures right now, a little chilly, but it is going to be a great start to your morning. That's right, Sarah. Going to be getting into the uh, 80s for today, the low 80s, and then uh, possibly the 70s, uh, mid 80s for tomorrow, and then cooling down into the 70s later on this week. But let's look at, look, uh, take a look at our current temperature 
temperature there, 53 degrees, south winds at five miles an hour. Uh, looking at our current temperatures across the valley there, 55 Meridian, 49 out in Caldwell, and then 52 Nampa, and then 57 out in Ontario. Uh, going to talk a little bit about our radar. We are going to see um, stay. We'll, we're going to stay dry for now, but around Wednesday we're going to see a system move through the region, bringing showers to the mountain region and the possibility of thunderstorms as well. And it's going to cool us down into those cooler 70s, mid 70s, and upper 60s uh, temperatures for Wednesday and Thursday as well. But Today, 83 here, Boise, 83 down in Mountain Home, 81 out in Nampa, and then 81 there in Caldwell, and there's 73 out there in McCall. So here's a list of what we could expect. Mix of sun and clouds, those hazy conditions, shower chance on Wednesday, and then of course those cooler temperatures arriving as that system moves in about midweek. Looking at our extended forecast, hazy conditions for today. That haze still sticking around 81, 85 there by tomorrow. Tuesday will be the warmest day. Sunny conditions before we cool down into the up uh, 77 there. Shower chance on Wednesday, partly cloudy 67 on Thursday, and then getting back into the 70s there by Friday. Sunny conditions, mid 70s, lows in the upper 40s and lower 50s. Taking a quick look at that mountain forecast, hazy conditions, showers, highs in the six, uh, 70s, and then cooling down as well, lows in the 40s. Thank you, Marco. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Morning, Ron. How's it looking? Good morning. So far this morning, relatively quiet. We did have uh, some uh, work going on with Eagle Road overnight paving work, and that got wrapped up. Now we're getting reports of a possible crash. Eagle Road at Fairview. Looks like a couple of lanes blocked. Yeah, right in the intersection. Fairview Avenue eastbound and Eagle Road southbound. Looks like two lanes blocked in each of those two directions, Eagle and Fairview. Uh, other than that, uh, freeway drive is a breeze. I-84 and 184 look good. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a new treatment netting good news for those suffering from long COVID. And later, helping a critical need right here in our community. You can join us for the CBS2 Blood Drive this Wednesday. We have details when we come back. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 624. Welcome back. CBS2, we're hosting a blood drive this Wednesday. As we know, blood is so important for those in need of life-saving care. That's why the American Red Cross is asking for your help. Now, back in January, hospitals across the valley, they're critically low in their blood supply. While blood supply across Idaho has gone up, there's still a great need for blood platelets and O-negative blood types. And again, that blood drive is this Wednesday. It'll be at the Boise Town Square Mall from 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Stop by, say hi, give blood. To make an appointment, you can head to IdahoNews.com. All it takes is less than an hour to save a life. Well, it's estimated that one in five adults who have COVID-19 suffer from long COVID. That's months, even years after being infected. Now, researchers in New Jersey, they're testing a new treatment that could help those suffering with the most debilitating of symptoms. Elise Preston has more. Yes, we'll have you do that. Nurse Debbie Turner has spent three decades caring for patients. But when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, the frontline worker was the patient. There are a couple of days that I just, I don't remember at all. Now, more than two years after her infection, she's still battling symptoms of long COVID. I still have problems with um, my memory, like brain fog. Um, I still get short of breath. There's still so much unknown about this virus. As scientists work to better understand long COVID, treatment usually focuses on relieving symptoms. Now, a new study at Hackensack University Medical Center is testing whether omega-3 supplements can help. Because we know COVID is an inflammatory process, could fish oil supplements minimize the inflammation, which in turn is possibly causing these long-term symptoms? 
Dr. Manisha Parulikar is leading the study. The omega-3 supplement is a specific formulation that's different from products purchased over the counter. Nurse Turner is one of 30 <laughs> participants in the study's first round. I don't know if, if I really felt a difference, but I felt hopeful that no matter what happens, if I'm on the placebo or I'm taking this, that all of this is aimed at being able to find something that may work. Proud to be a part of research that could help long COVID patients get their lives back. Elise Preston, CBS News, Hackensack, New Jersey. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a funeral fit for the queen. We take you live to Westminster right after the break. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the president addressing concerns about the economy, what he has to say as more Americans find themselves paying up. Plus, the Boise Rescue Mission does more than give people a place to stay. A look at the program helping kids in college. Plus, fire season raging here in Idaho. How crews are progressing in the battle against some of our biggest blazes. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Here's a look at our live shot right now. Downtown Boise, there are 53 degrees. South winds are at five miles an hour. It's going to be a nice mild start to your morning. Looking at our current temperatures, 53 Boise, 47 down in Mountain Home, 49 there out in Caldwell, and then Ontario there at 57, and there's Idaho City there at 40 degrees. Looking at our temperature trends for this morning, getting into the upper 50s by 9 a.m., 63 there by 10 a.m., and then upper 60s and then 70 there by noon and 11 a.m. as well. Going to take a look at our uh, almanac for this time of year. Normal is our uh, high, 79 degrees is our normal high for this time of year, but we'll be a couple degrees above that, 83 Boise, 83 there, Mountain Home. And then, of course, taking a look at your uh, morning running forecast or walking forecast, looking, things are looking good. Uh, no alerts, uh, with the exception of some hazy conditions as those linger in our area, but going to be a nice uh, upper, uh, low 80s day today and lots of sunshine. Yeah, picture perfect forecast. Thank you, Marcos. It is 631 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look for you over I-84 this morning. We do have a collision, a traffic collision. It's on East Fairview Avenue and North Eagle Road. That's out in Meridian. Um, happened again about an hour ago, so may still be cleaning that up this morning. Of course, when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 6.70 a.m. or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom, and you're looking live in London this morning. Queen Elizabeth II's coffin is moving to Westminster Abbey, where the state funeral is being held. You can check in on IdahoNews.com for all the live updates. And the eyes of the world are on Britain as the nation says a last goodbye today to Queen Elizabeth II. As many as two million people could fill the streets of London to watch the funeral procession. CBS's Ian Lee is there with more. People rushed to join the line to say a final farewell to Queen Elizabeth. The last mourners filed past her coffin early this morning. I felt just had to come and pay my final respects to our majestic queen. She's done so much for us. Over the last four days, hundreds of thousands of people waited to honor the queen, including kings and presidents. I think it's such a beautiful way for her to have been sent off with people around. The doors to this stage of mourning have closed. Now guests for the monarch's funeral will fill Westminster Abbey. The royal family invited more than 2,000 people, including 500 world leaders. After the funeral, a procession will carry the Queen's coffin through the historic heart of London as Big Ben rings out one last time for Her Majesty. It's a moment of history. It's a moment that we'd never get to experience probably in our lifetime. This woman and her young son camped out overnight in Windsor to get a glimpse of Queen Elizabeth's coffin as it makes its way there this afternoon for her burial. We have sleeping bags, uh, some food, um, yeah, lots of layers. 
Ten days of national mourning will come to an end when the monarch is laid to rest in a private ceremony at St. George's Chapel alongside her late husband, Prince Philip. I don't think we're ever going to have a monarch that's going to reign for 70 years again. Queen Elizabeth's passing at age 96 came the same year she celebrated seven decades on the throne as Britain's longest reigning monarch. Today marks the end of the Elizabethan era. On Sunday, President Biden signed the official condolence book and attended a reception at Buckingham Palace hosted by King Charles III. President Biden called Queen Elizabeth decent and honorable and all about service, saying his heart went out to the royal family. Well, here at home this morning, President Biden speaking out in what's become a rarity for him, a sit-down interview. Now, he addressed some common concerns about the economy on 60 Minutes last night. Now, some predict oil may climb back up to $150 a barrel. As the consumer price index numbers just released showed, it's up 8.3% in August from the previous year. It's, been, it's the highest inflation rate, Mr. President, in 40 years. I got that, but guess what we are? We're in a position where for the last several months it hasn't spiked. It has just barely, it's been basically even. While President Biden's overall approval rating has been steadily increasing, a brand new NBC News poll shows 58% of voters disapprove of how he's dealing with the economy and give Republicans a 19-point advantage over Democrats on the issue, which is an all-time high. Well, your gas and electric prices, they'll be going up. Natural gas prices have soared from a global supply shortage, and they're expected to stay high for months as we get closer to the winter. Now, the Energy Information Administration estimates electricity will average 14.8 per kilowatt hour this year. That's up 7.5% from last year. And here in Idaho, gas prices continue to snail with their downward trend. You can expect to pay an average of about 4.41 a gallon this morning. That's down several cents from a week ago, but still 73 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will still be Costco in Boise. You can get it for $4.16 a gallon there. And Idaho's unemployment rate ticked up in August, but only by a tenth of a percent. It's now at 2.7 percent. That's still one full percentage point lower than our national average. The Boise Rescue Mission is known for providing shelter and food to the homeless. But what you may not know is that the Rescue Mission also helps with education. The mission is helping young people in its care go to college. As part of the program, staffers take students on college tours around the West. And it's so the kids get an uh, understanding that this is what college is and you can go to college because so many of them have no one in their family that have ever been to college before. Reverend, Reverend Bill Roscoe, who heads up the rescue mission, says there are a lot of inspiring stories that have come out of the program. We have a gal at BSU who came to City Light with her mother when she was nine years old, and today she's a junior at Boise State, and we've helped her over the years academically, and we've helped her funding her education. For more information about the educational programs at the Boise Rescue Mission and how you can help, visit IdahoNews.com. Well, here in Idaho, fire season is still underway. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, there are 38 large fires burning in Idaho as of this morning. Now, our state's largest blaze, that's the Moose Fire. It's burned over 130,000 acres so far. Officials holding a community meeting today in North Salmon to talk about the fire. So far, it is 51% contained. And the Ross Fork Fire, that's nearly 38,000 acres this morning. Some good news. Crews say cooler weather helping limit that fire activity. The blaze, it's bumped to 44% containment. Yeah, good news for our fires. Also good news for our temperatures out there. Um, clear skies as well. I don't know about you guys, but it was a great weekend. Oh, it was beautiful. Loved all the, yes. all the cooler weather. <laughs> yes, no, hoping we have a little more of that on tap. For that, of course, we're turning to Marcos Guadarrama. That's right, Sarah. Mild conditions for today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the surface smoke forecast, though. Definitely seeing that improvement uh, compared to about a week ago. Now that weather, that moisture, those windy conditions have helped push some of that uh, haze out of out of the area. And then we're going to see more improvements as the week progresses and we see another system move into the area as well. So uh, definitely improvement there. We were in that sensitive group category 101 to 150, but uh, finally down to that uh, decent area 
area to where we don't really have to uh, limit that time outdoors. So looking at that out to school, uh, out to off to school forecast, clear conditions this morning, 55 degrees and then this afternoon as your uh, the kids are headed home you're picking them up at the bus stop 79 degrees nice and sunny may see some cloud coverage as well out there but uh, going to be sunny for the most part looking at our current temperatures 55 out in Meridian 49 Caldwell 50 there in Nampa and then 50 down in Mountain Home as well. So a uh, nice uh, cool conditions for this morning, 50s and going to be getting into the 60s as the morning goes on as well. Looking at our temperature history, going to be staying in that near normal or below normal category as that system comes in on Wednesday, cooling us down a bit. But for today, 83 there, Boise, 79, Idaho City, 83 Mountain Home and then 81 out in Nampa. So uh, nice above above normal uh, highs for today, but definitely going to see that cool down later on this week. Sarah. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Marcos. It is 639 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. And Ron, uh, we're hearing about a crash. Fairview and Eagle, can you tell us more? Right in the intersection for the most part, police are on the scene. We've got at least two lanes blocked. Well, pretty much two lanes blocked in each direction. And uh, that could change up at any given time. Looks like at least one tow truck's on the scene of uh, at least one vehicle damaged pretty badly. So Eagle and Fairview. Now, not any huge backups right now because traffic's not that heavy as far as volume goes, but still a little local holdup. I-84, there's been some of the merge crowding that comes and goes near 10 Mile and Meridian Road. Coming east on 84. Again, not real extensive. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bland. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, Ron's got you covered. Just turn your dial to 670 KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And it's time for our question of the day. That question is six out of 10 people think it's socially acceptable to do this this time of year. All right, Marcos, Ashley, what are we thinking? I think I'm staying with listen to Christmas music <laughs> just because I know when it gets to this time of year, I may or may not participate. <laughs> I love it. We're getting no yelled in our ear right now as well. No Christmas music. I'm definitely going to stick with that Christmas Christmas theme as well. But I mean, I don't know. The other thing I could think of is uh, I don't sit by the pool or something. I don't know. As, as we kind of transition into the fall. <laughs> sit by the pool. Yeah. I mean, I, We're just frowning at people that sit by the pool. Don't do that right now. We're getting into <laughs> fall, guys. Get with the game. I love it. All right. Pat says turning on the heat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Considered that over the weekend, but uh, didn't want to be a wuss, so not calling you all out there. Not happening let's, at my house. But. Let's see what else. Ed says football parties. Yeah, it's yeah. the time of the year for football parties. A nice tailgate as football season. Yes, of know. course. You could you could always see Marco Squadarama out there at some of the BSU <laughs> foot games, football and games. I'm out there over tailgating. The weekend. So. Yeah. All right. Douglas says sharing a pumpkin spice latte. Oh, oh, I don't yeah. know about the sharing it part. That's I mean, <laughs> liquid gold for me, but definitely a good guess. I like this, guys. All right. If you think you know the answer, still 15 minutes to guess. Of course, you can do that on our Facebook page or our Twitter, and we will reveal the answer right before CBS this morning. Pumpkin spice latte sounds good. All right. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, Hurricane Fiona slamming Puerto Rico. The impact so far and what's forecast next for the island. Looking at your local forecast in Payette today, hazy conditions with a high of 81. Tonight, that haze sticking around with a low of 54. And then tomorrow, more haze with a high of 83. Thank you, Marcos. You're looking live in London this morning, where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin moving to Westminster Abbey. That's where the state funeral is being held. Now you can check in on IdahoNews.com. We have live updates for you. In the meantime, though, thousands camped out on the streets of London overnight, hoping to secure a place to watch Queen Elizabeth's funeral procession. President Biden and at least 500 other heads of state and dignitaries traveled to London to attend the monarch's funeral under the tightest security the city has ever seen. Well, in the meantime, Hurricane Fiona made landfall in Puerto Rico this weekend. It left crippling damage and more than a million people in the dark. Now, Naomi Ruckham shows us the impact so far and what's forecast next for the island. 
Category 1 Hurricane Fiona slammed into Puerto Rico Sunday, triggering landslides and floods that ripped apart roads and homes. The storm washed away this bridge in a central mountain town, which was installed by the National Guard after Hurricane Maria hit in 2017. Hundreds have been evacuated or rescued, with muddy water sweeping away cars, pouring into buildings, and destroying an airport runway. Authorities have opened more than 100 shelters across the island. In the south, <laughs> evacuees say they are worried about the houses they left behind. Forecasters now warn historic levels of rain could be on the way, up to 30 inches in eastern and southern Puerto Rico. At least a million customers were left without power into Monday, shutting down schools and government agencies across the island. At a Puerto Rican grocery store in Houston, employees worry about their family members back home. They're going to struggle a lot, like things are not going to be the same in a while for them. The damage is evoking painful memories for the island territory. Hurricane Fiona hit just two days before the fifth anniversary of Hurricane Maria, a Category 4 storm which was blamed for nearly 3,000 deaths. Puerto Rico's governor is calling the damage from Fiona catastrophic. President Biden has declared a state of emergency. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. And Hurricane Fiona struck on the anniversary of Hurricane Hugo. It hit Puerto Rico 33 years ago as a Category 3 storm. Now, officials say it could take several days to restore power on the island. And a powerful typhoon has hit the shore of southwestern Japan. The typhoon made landfall in Japan's Kyushu region Sunday, then weakened to a tropical storm. Japan's meteorological agency says the storm has gusts of wind that hit up to 100 miles per hour. Around 10 million people were ordered to evacuate due to the typhoon. As of this morning, at least one person has been found dead due to the storm. And in Alaska, floodwaters are starting to recede after the remnants of Typhoon Murbok battered the side of the western state on battered the side of the western state. It's the worst storm there in a half a century, leaving destruction along 1,000 miles of coastline. While damage is widespread, there have been no reports of injuries or deaths. Well, in California, many returning home as progress is made against the mosquito fire. More than 12,000 evacuees can now go home, but slow and steady rainfall helped suppress that fire, and crews were able to push the blaze away from homes. I can't wait to get back in the house with my animals, and we're looking forward to sleeping in our own beds tonight. Just less than 500 people are still under evacuation orders, while less than 1,000 are under an evacuation warning. Now, before those evacuation zones can officially be downgraded, utility companies and fire agencies will need to discuss fire behavior. Yeah, these cooler conditions have been great news for, of course, our fires and for just all of us here just wanting to get outside and enjoy the weather. It was a beautiful weekend, guys. Definitely made me want to get outside and just soak it all in. Yeah, and hopefully it's not over yet. Marcos, what do you have for us? No, definitely going to be staying in those uh, cooler conditions, the cooler range, Sarah, low 80s, upper 70s, and we are going to see even more of a cool down later on this week. But I'm going to start out by showing you our live uh, shot right now. 53 degrees, south winds are at 5 miles an hour. Feels like 53 degrees out there. Our current temperatures as you uh, head out the door this morning and start your week. 55 out in Meridian, Caldwell there at 49 and then 50 for our friends out in Nampa. There's a 44 out in McCall and then 57 Ontario and 49 there Caldwell. We're going to be staying dry for the time being, but about midweek Wednesday, we're going to see a system move through the area bringing rain uh, into the region and cooling us down along with those gusty winds and the potential for thunderstorms as well. But these are our highs for today. 83 down in Mountain Home, 79 out in Idaho City, Emmett there at 82 and then Caldwell there at 81 degrees. So a quick rundown, those hazy conditions, sun and clouds, shower, shower chance on Wednesday, and then those cooler temps uh, reaching our region uh, here this week. So hazy today, 81, 85 for tomorrow, warming up that shower chance on Wednesday, getting down into the 70s and cooling down even more on Thursday, partly cloudy, 67, before we get back into those sunny conditions, highs in the 70s there, 72 Friday, 77 Saturday, and those lows in the upper 40s, low 50s.
Thank you, Marco. 651 on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. And Ron, any updates on that Fairview Eagle crash? And not much change. A couple lanes blocked in each direction, all four directions there, Eagle Fairview. The biggest impact is, uh, of course, this time of the morning becoming southbound, southbound Eagle Road. We're getting delays now back partway to the light at River Valley, so a little under half mile delay developing southbound. Other directions haven't been too bad, but the tow trucks have been there working on some of the vehicles. Maybe a while yet, though. Traffic on I-84, pretty minimal on the crowding, but a little bit that uh, kind of comes and goes, mainly at uh, 10 Mile Meridian Road, as far as the eastbound trip on 84. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. No, thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 a.m. or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, our pet of the week still looking for a forever home. We introduce you to Talbot straight ahead. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 654, welcome back. Idaho Fish and Game receiving multiple reports of a mountain lion in Garden City and West Boise neighborhoods. Now, doorbell cameras caught this guy wandering through town. Wildlife managers say the mountain lion, he was avoiding people and conflicts and saying there's no risk to public safety. Though they do want to remind you that if you do see one of these guys walking around, never run away or turn your back. Instead, slowly back away while maintaining eye contact. Well, our CBS2 Pet of the Week still in need of a loving forever home. Now, this is Talbot. Check out those eyebrows. Yeah, those are not drawn on. He's a seven-year-old Alaskan Malamute blend. He's a fluffy guy and gets tangles, so he'll need lots of brushing. To meet Talbot or any of the West Valley Humane Society's other pets available for adoption, just schedule an appointment. Head to IdahoNews.com. Well, lots of fun in Idaho over the weekend. The Boise's First United Methodist Church celebrated 150 years in the Treasure Valley. It all started downtown at Cathedral of the Rockies. Though through its century and a half, Pastor Benjamin Creamer says the focus has remained on improving our community. And so we're going to look back at our history of how we have done that and how maybe we haven't done that so well and hoping to continue into the future with uh, making an, a positive impact in, in our Boise community. Yeah, it was also about fun over the weekend. They had a bounce house for kids, food, music, and those who made a donation to the church's pantry got to take a shot at dunking the pastor. Lots of fun. And take a look at this. Many traveled to Camelsback Park at the Hyde, Street Park, or the Hyde Park Street Fair. If you want to see more of the fun, you can head to IdahoNews.com. We do have a full photo gallery for you there. And it's time for our question of the day. Here it is. Marcos, you want to read it? <laughs> uh, six out of ten people think it's socially acceptable to do this this time of year. What is it? The answer is celebrate Halloween. I don't know, guys. I was kind of in the mood a little bit. A yes, little off just there, today. Maybe not Christmas, but Halloween. We're right. just a couple holidays off. It's closer <laughs> it's than couple. Christmas. So. All right, guys. Yeah, get ready. And it's going to get cooler. We're looking forward to it. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next, and watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.